Ooh. Oh man, that was a good sleep inside my entirely legitimate house. Let's have a walk outside and oh my god, two mushrooms out of nowhere. <laughs> this is not actually a house. It is a nice little. Oh. And cover that a little early. This is a nice little area I've built. That contains a little something I've invented that should pretty much eliminate the need for mushroom farms. It's not a huge thing, but it's really simple to make. All you need is about Let's see. Six redstone, two pistons, and whatever blocks you want, and a pressure plate. Obviously, you'll need some mushrooms to toss in, but if you don't have those, how, why are you wanting to build a mushroom farm in the first place? Go find some mushrooms. Come on. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to leave the half with the red mushrooms together so I can show you what it looks like from the inside. Now as we go up here, it doesn't interfere with your standard door. This is something you put at your entrances or exits. When you step on the pressure plate, pistons come out, knock two mushrooms down to you. I find that because of growth restrictions, with only one spot open, and there only being four mushrooms, you get about one an hour. This is enough for casual users. I'm going to go down into the bottom quick. Oh dear. I'm filling up the ocean, but I haven't got, quite gotten this part done yet. I thought I had that a little farther from the edge edge. Ah, well. I love um, netherrack, though, because it makes stuff like this so much easier. It's really easy to harvest, too. I'll probably do a tutorial on that sometime soon. It's just... Why you do this to me, Ocean? Why? Alright. All you need to do... is have your redstone... <laughs> have your redstone... place it under the pressure plate... instead of... two underneath, instead of your normal... just placing the door next to it. Won't interfere with the door. If you come over this way, you can see there's a torch on the side. Goes up to a torch, goes up to a block, which is under a piston. It's important to keep the piston covered up because they're transparent, they let light through. But you can see that, uh, the light from even the sun with this cover is not enough to knock the mushrooms out. If you've watched my mushroom tests, they do grow 30 percent slower under this much light, give or take a couple of percent. But it's a really simple setup. It's easy for beginning users. All right, now while I'm walking over to the next one, I'm going to pull up the schematics quick. Don't worry about them uh, going past quickly. This is for the first basic one and just go through. If you have any problems making it, pause. It's showing layer by layer from the bottom to the top and you'll be able to copy if that one doesn't work right off for you. Now here is a more advanced one. I'm going to have two of these in my final base and that should take care of my needs. I'm not huge on combat but it will produce more than I strictly need, so if I am going to go fight stuff, I'll have some extra. As in the last one, the netherrack blocks are just for blocking light. And you can see, even knocking them out, only a few of the mushrooms popped out. Different factors like overhangs and similar contribute to that. Oh dear. 
You can see a red mushroom did grow in this. Let me clear all these mushrooms out in the middle. I'll show you why a red mushroom grow over the other side and I'll explain why this works faster. First off, instead of having three here, one on either side of the piston, as in the simpler design, this has the row of three. The ones at the end are affected by light and do grow 30% slower. However, it also has these lying in the middle corridor and behind, above and below the piston is another row. The bottom has three. Every row above has two because you can't plan on the piston. Get out my way. All right, there we go. And in the middle, on the sides, are those mushrooms, as I mentioned. Now, the reason random color mushrooms can grow on the wrong side is because both of these mushrooms in the middle will try to grow to both sides. That's fine. If one of those does manage to sprout, which is pretty unlikely before all six or seven over here. It just means you got a mushroom a little quicker because of these. And that will happen equally often for the red and the brown, since there's two of each here in the middle. So in the end, you'll end up with an equal amount of mushrooms. Now, like the other one, this does run just on gravity and pistons. It doesn't interfere with doorways. Because of the fact that the torches can't be just underneath the piston, the wire underneath does go out one further before coming to the block with the torch on the side. Once we run up here, that block goes to here. Torch, block. The first piston is above this with redstone wiring behind it. Block with the torch on the side. Block with redstone wiring on top. An additional block. Which if we mosey on over there quickly, we can see has another torch. And carries the signal to the second piston. This is pretty simple, relatively speaking, though it does take up more space. Once again, it is important to block the light heading into the the piston squares because that will speed growth. However, because we can completely cover the light in those two rows and the top row is so much further up, once the squares blocking light are in, most of this will be growing maximum speed. Let me see if I can calculate exactly where in my head. <laughs> Just uh, just for the sake of completeness. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to show the schematics. Right from the door. This would be light level 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 10, uh, Oh wow, that's interesting. All of the mushrooms that are exposed are growing at the slower rate. Now if my math is a little off, and I'm counting wrong, maybe the two at the very tippy top aren't, but uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Now you could rejigger this to have t have um more levels and the levels above where it is now would actually be at the lower light level and could spawn quicker. But as it is, there are three entire rows on each side growing at the highest level. There are more mushrooms going into the squares and this produces mushrooms much faster. That one is about one of each every hour 
maybe a little less 40 minutes. This is about two of each, little under every half an hour. And that's really nice because it'll just be somewhere you'll walk through regularly. You won't need to think about it. You'll never need to plan again. And with possible changes to water mechanics coming up, there's an off chance the old style farms just won't work anymore. This is simple. It doesn't use mechanics that are going to change. It works the way it works. It doesn't rely on bugs. It's going to work forever. Now this is something a little different. This is my first one testing what worked, what didn't work. I just wanted to make it as big as possible. You're not going to get a schematic. It would take too long. But just in case you want to think up your own sort of thing. I was through here just a few minutes ago. It popped out a mushroom anyways. Every time I've been through here except going like this, it's popped out at least one. And even going like this, just once it gave me a brown mushroom, which was pretty sweet. Now this, instead of just being open, has two sticky pistons, pushing and retracting this sticky piston and the block with it completely blocks out light. I designed an access point that is windy enough that it do the mushrooms up in here are at the required light level for maximum growth. The majority of the redstone torches are on the outside. And while this is pretty patchwork and crazy, I think it looks really cool. Uh, I'm probably going to keep this one around in my testing area, just as kind of a auxiliary mushroom producer. And good times. That was pretty fun. Alright. Um, I hope you guys like this. If you didn't, don't subscribe. Don't give it a thumbs up. Never check it out again. I know these things are a little fiddly for some people, but I try to keep it simple, nice for people. Like I said, these are just for blocking light, so if you're building either of these underground, you don't need to worry about it. In fact, this one I plan on hopefully having both underground or inside a very big wall, so it will just be a completely normal looking thing. Except that if you look up, you'll be able to see the mushrooms coming to you. Never have to mess with it. Uh, coming up, I am starting an adventure series, and I'm going to have a tutorial on how to get lots and lots and lots of netherrack. Enough to fill up an entire ocean, in fact. Which is what I'm going to get back on quick. Now, and um, just a pro tip for anyone working underwater. Torch, wall, full breath. That one is a bug that I expect will be fixed someday, but uh, it's a useful little fact to know. Also, and I completely forgot, if you're working under ice, a torch will stop you from drowning because it won't freeze over on top of you. Right, that's enough for little tips, simple structures, more advanced things, and my normal craziness today. I really hope everyone enjoyed, and please leave a comment, whether you did or not. I like improving this, making things people like, and I hope this helped you out a lot. Thanks for your time, everybody.